Welcome everyone. In this walkthrough, we're going to be working with the Titanic.r script and the Titanic.csv from the class website. So make sure you've got those downloaded uh, and here we are ready to go. First thing is we'll need to load in the Tidyverse and ggplot2 libraries, some standbys for this course. Uh, and there are two overall learning goals for this walkthrough. First, we're going to master some basics of data workflow in RStudio, specifically these five operations here, group, pipe, summarize, filter, and mutate. These are going to help us create some summary statistics for this data set. And then in part two, uh, we are going to use those summary statistics to make some pretty bar plots. So let's read in the data set itself. You can either use this command line form here on line 11, or you can use the import data set button over here. I'll walk you through this. Uh, let me come over here to where I've stored this data set on my machine. It is here in titanic.csv. Remember our checklist. What do we want to call this? Titanic that works. Does it have a header row? Yes, it does. And yes, our studio is correctly interpreting that. And what separates the fields? Commas. And ours got that as well. So we're good to go. Let's hit import. And now we've got a data set here having uh, every passenger on the Titanic for which there was a known age. Back to the script. So uh, you want to take a quick peek at the first six lines. That's always a nice thing to do here. They are the first six passengers alphabetically. Now, in a previous walkthrough, we learned how to make basic contingency tables of proportions. So here, for example, we'll make a table of uh, proportions. Uh, that is the conditional probability of survival by passenger class, first class, second class, third class of travel. So we do that by taking X tabs, piping to the prop.table command, uh, and then conditioning on the column variables, that's what margin equals 2 gets us. So we find, for example, that the conditional probability of survival given traveling in first class was about 64% versus about 26% traveling in third class. Now, this is great for doing data exploration, but you'll find uh, that there's a lot of limitations with X tabs and prop.table if you intend to turn these proportions into plots. It turns out that to generate summaries for plotting, it's much more straightforward to use a slightly different approach. And that approach is going to be pipe, group, and summarize. It's a little bit more involved up front, but it turns out that fancy plots and fancy summaries are much easier to generate using this, uh, this workflow. And the basic reason, I'll say it up front and we'll uh, uncover this a little bit more later, is that if you want to make fancy plots, what we need our summaries to be in is what's called long form. And I will see what long form is by example later. So let's just see a quick example of group pipe summarize in action. In this block of code right here, what we're doing uh, is we are taking the Titanic data set, we are piping it to the group by function, and that takes every row of the data set and sifts it into groups according to this conditioning variable here. So we're grouping all of the passengers according to the sex variable, and there's only two options in this data set, male uh, and female. Then the resulting uh, grouped data set, we pipe to the summarize function. And summarize, you can define as many summary statistics as you want. Here we're actually defining four summary statistics. First is the total count, and we do that using this function n with a open and close parentheses and an empty container inside it. That's a tidyverse function that just counts cases. So this will tell us how many men and how many women were on the Titanic. Then uh, we'll compute the mean age for each of these two groups. We'll compute how many survived, and then we'll count the survival percentage. Okay, so n and mean here, those are tidyverse functions. This little block right here uh, is just asking how many passengers have the survived variable equal to yes. And we're summing up that count right there. So you notice that there's actually a double equal sign right there. In R, and in a lot of programming languages, you use a single equal sign to assign a variable, and you use a double equal sign to test for equality. So this will go case by case and ask, did they survive? Yes, true or false? And it will sum up the number of cases for which the answer is true. In other words, uh, the passengers survived. And then we'll take these two variables that we've defined, serve count and total count, and take their ratio, and the resulting uh, variable will be serve percentage. So let's just take a look at what gets produced when we do this. We get a summary table here. So we've got the two groups that came out of this group by operation right here. And then we've got four additional columns corresponding to the four summary statistics that we defined. So in, in the summarize block, each one of these little statements separated by commas and a new line uh, right here 
has on the left hand side a summary variable that you'd like to create and on the right hand side a recipe for how to create it. This would say count, this would say take the mean of some other variable, this one says sum up the ones uh, who survived, and this would say take the ratio of two variables that I've already defined, serve count here, divided by total count up here. And so I get my summary table. Now, it turns out we could also skip the middleman variables. So total count and serve count here, I'm calling those middleman variables. They were primarily useful in defining what the survival percentage are. I could just take this thing right here and divide by this thing right here and define that directly in survival percentage without actually defining summary variables. And so then I get a slightly more concise table without the total count or the serve count columns right here. And again, your mileage may vary in terms of whether you want the wider table or the narrower one. So that's a quick example of group pipe summarize in action. The next operation we want to learn is filter. And filter is what's going to let us focus on a particular subset of the rows of a data set. So for example, in this block of code right here, what we're going to do is look only at the female passengers in the Titanic. So we take the full data set, we pipe it to filter, and we do a test, right? Do we say, all right, sex equals equals female. That's a test for uh, whether this variable equals this string right here. And this will return only those rows of the data set for which this test is true. Then we'll take the resulting filtered or subset uh, of the data set, pipe it to group by. We'll group all of the passengers according to whether uh, which class of travel they were in, first, second, or third. And then we'll do our summary operations. We'll ask how many of them are there, call that variable the total count. And then we'll ask, well, how many of them survived divided by however many there were, total count right there. And we'll call that serve underscore PCT, serve percentage. So the resulting table of summary statistics has total count and survival percentage by class of travel, but only for uh, those whose uh, sex was listed as female. And we see, for example, that the survival probability among first class females was 96%, and among third class uh, travelers uh, who were female was 47.4%. Uh, we can filter on any variable you want. So for example, this was filtering on a categorical variable. This next block of code is filtering on a numerical variable, saying let's only look at those whose age uh, was less than 18. Group by passenger class, and calculate our total count and our survival percentage using summarize. So this is group or filter, group, and summarize all piped together. Okay. The fifth and final uh, workflow operation we're going to cover in this work uh, workflow uh, is mutate. And mutate is what allows us to add a column to a data frame. Uh, so in this particular case, what we'll do is we'll add a, a column that's going to take our age variable, which is a numerical measure, you know, were you one year old, were you 18 years old, were you 37, et cetera, and turn that into a categorical variable, uh, whether you were 18 plus or under 18, an adult or a child. So what we'll do here is use the mutate function to add that variable to the data set. We'll take our data set Titanic, we'll pipe it to mutate. Mutate expects, again, a new variable that you want to define on the left-hand side of the equal sign. And on the right-hand side, it expects a formula for constructing that variable from the original data set. So here, our formula for constructing the adult variable uh, is an if-else statement. This works exactly like the if-else uh, command in Excel, if you're familiar with that. There are three inputs to if-else. There's a test. Are you 18? Yes or no. Uh, or over yes or no. If the answer is yes to this question, we return the value 18 plus. If the answer is no, we return the second entry, which in this case we're calling under 18. So you notice that what we do, we take Titanic, we pipe it to mutate, and then we overwrite the result uh, using the same name, Titanic. So this is how you would, for example, augment your original data set with a new column. Let's execute that. And now look at the first several lines of our new augmented Titanic data frame. And it's now got this new column for every passenger saying, were you an adult, yes or no, 18 plus or under 18? And again, these labels, we could have called them anything we want and we could have called the name of the variable anything we want. All right, so now let's use group pipe summarize to group by more than one variable at once. In this case, we'll group all of our passengers, not just by sex, but by three variables, uh, whether they were male or female, whether they were adult, and what class of travel they were in. Then for each combination of these characteristics, we'll calculate the survival percentage. Let's take a look at what this does. The result is what we called earlier a long form table of summary statistics. 
every row of this table corresponds to a specific combination of these features that defined my grouping. Female, 18 plus, first class. Male, under 18, first class, and so on. And for each combination of features, we have the overall survival percentage for among all passengers that shared that feature. So that's why we call it long form. There's one row for every group. All right, so that now brings us to part two of this walkthrough. We've learned some basic workflow operations, group, pipe, summarize, filter, and mutate uh, that allow us to compute summary statistics on the full data set, on groups of the data set, on subsets of the data set. Now we're gonna use that to make some bar plots. So what we'll do is go back to our uh, simple group pipe summarize starting point where we simply group every passenger according to whether they were male or female. We summarize those groups by asking what the survival percentage was. And now we're gonna store the result in a data frame called D1. So instead of just putting it out to the console right here, it's now stored in D1 and now we can plot it. Let's now go use ggplot to make a bar plot with these survival percentages right here. So this data frame has two variables, sex and survival percentage. Let's build up our ggplot in layers. So in layer one, we say, where should we look for the variables? And we're gonna look in the data frame D1 that we defined up here using our group pipe summarize operation. Now we add a layer, and this is going to be geom call. Call stands for column. We're gonna have columns that represent the height of our summary statistics. Um, in common parlance, that's gonna be a bar plot. So what, how do we make a bar plot? Well, we now remember the basics of ggplot. We have to take variables within our data set and map them to aesthetic properties of our geometric objects. So in this case, our geometric objects are columns, rectangles. And the, there's, loca there's two features here. What's the location? What variable defines the location of the column, female or male? And that's our x equals sex variable up here. And the second property of that geometric object is the height, and that's the y. So x equals sex, y equals survival percentage, gives you a bar plot of survival percentage for females versus male passengers on the Titanic. And this workflow here of first defining a, uh, a summary statistic data frame like we do up here using group pipe summarize, and then taking that summary data frame and feeding it in to ggplot to make a bar plot is, is very easy to generalize to make much fancier plots than what you see over here. So in this second code block here, uh, we're gonna do uh, a couple of things. We're gonna group by sex and whether the passenger was an adult, and then we're gonna summarize the survival percentage. Okay, so D2 now. There's our long form table for every combination of male or female and 18 plus or under 18, and then a third column for the survival percentage. Uh, now let's use our table of summary statistics to make our bar plot, okay? So uh, this bar plot is gonna have three elements to it. The sex, right here. The age, 18 plus or under 18, right here. And the survival percentage. Uh, and so there's a couple of different comparisons that we can make uh, from this plot. So we can compare, for example, survival versus sex holding age constant, focusing only on the adults and asking how did sex predict survival, male uh, versus female uh, on the Titanic for the 18 pluses and then for the under 18s. And that would be comparing for a fixed set of bars right here, red versus green. Or we could compare survival versus age, adult or child, holding sex constant. And that would entail comparing this red bar with this red bar, asking adult females versus ch uh, children females, or the, blue, the green bar versus the green bar, uh, adult males versus child males right there. So again, come back and look at the syntax. How did we do that? So we had to define now three aesthetic mappings. Adult, that's a variable that tells us our location on the x-axis right here. Survival percentage, that tells us the height of the column, the height of the rectangle. And then there's a third aesthetic property, the fill. What color do we fill in the bars with? And that is defined by the sex variable here. There's one extra little flag that we have to pass to the bar plot here, and that's position equals dodge. And effectively, that makes these two bars dodge each other. You'll understand how that's different from the, another possibility here. If I just come back and instead change dodge to stack, you'll notice now I get a stacked bar plot. I personally think the dodge bar plot is much easier to understand here because it saves 
uh, the viewer of this plot the cognitive tax of having to do some mental arithmetic and say, no, wait a second, okay, I can tell that female survival percentage is higher than male survival percentage because this bar is thicker than this bar, uh, but what's the actual number? I gotta go kind of do some mental arithmetic to say where does that stop and where does that start to figure out what the actual female survival percentage is. The Dodge one makes that very apparent right there. Okay, you don't have to stop at two. Let's now add three conditioning variables. We're gonna group by sex, passenger class, and adult, that was the variable that we defined using mutate back at the beginning of this script. And then for each combination of those features, calculate the survival percentage using summarize. Now, we'll feed that summary data frame that we defined as D3 right here, 12 rows, one for each combination of sex, passenger, class, and adult, and feed it into ggplot. Our mapping now is gonna be the same as it was before. X will be adult. Y will be survival percentage, and the color of the bar uh, will be sex. So that's, if I just source that line, that's the same plot we made before. Now I'm adding a faceting layer using plus and then facet wrap. So when I do this whole block of code, I get this same basic plot you see on the right, but repeated three times, one for each passenger class. And you can make lots of comparisons from this plot. Let me make it a little bit bigger, in fact. Uh, you could compare survival versus sex, comparing the different colors of bars, holding age and class constant within a given pair of bars and within a given panel. You could compare survival versus passenger class holding age and sex constant. So for example, comparing this bar, first class, 18 plus females, to this bar, second class, uh, 18 plus females, to this bar, third class of travel, 18 plus females. Okay. So there's lots of different comparisons you make. Or you could compare survival versus age, holding sex and passenger class constant. So once you've got a plot like this, really it's just adornment. So for example, here's a block of code where you could add some prettier labels with a title, a y-axis label, an x-axis label that were slightly more informative, uh, and a capital letter over on the right-hand side. Okay. I also want to point out that you could undertake an entirely different organization of this exact same data set here simply by changing which features of, in the data set, which variables, map to which aesthetic properties. So up here, we mapped adult to the X location, survival percentage to Y, sex to fill, and we faceted on passenger class. Down here, an entirely different organization of the same information will take X mapping to sex, passenger class mapping to fill, and we'll wrap our facets according to whether you're an adult or not. So same data, entirely different organization, and this, for example, is a chart that would make comparisons across passenger class, first, second, third, for fixed sex and age, a little bit more immediate. So which organization you choose here depends on which comparison you are trying to foreground in the story you want to tell. All right, let's practice one more time. One more bar graph of summary statistics. This time we're gonna do means rather than proportions. So I'm gonna define a fourth summary data frame down here starting on line 158. We'll pipe Titanic to group by, we'll group by sex and passenger class. And now our summary variable is not a proportion of survival, but rather the mean age. So mean age is a variable I define and I calculate it by passing the age variable to the mean function on the right hand side of this equal sign. The result? is a table of summary statistics for every combination of sex and passenger class that has the mean age of passengers with those characteristics. Let's make a bar plot now. And now I get a bar plot that's showing, for example, that the third class passengers, regardless of sex, tended to be systematically younger than the first class passengers uh, who had the, uh, the coin to travel uh, above the water line on the Titanic. All right, so we've covered a lot in this walkthrough. We've covered the basics of workflow, group, pipe, summarize, filter, and mutate. Those were what allowed us to define summary statistics for our data sets, and then we fed the results into a bar plot, a series of bar plots uh, that conditioned on one, and then two, and then three variables. All right, happy coding, and uh, look forward to the next walkthrough.